hit it, Logan. Okay. <laughs> it's X After Hours Podcast with Mariah and Ty. Your weekly download of X929's X Afternoons Extracurricular Activities. Enjoy. This week on X After Hours. A message from the government of Canada. <laughs> Like, you know, you see your wall of dildies. Like, I could design a way better alien well, cock the- than that. Did you say your urethral? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Has you really been far, <laughs> even as decided to use Even Go Want to Look More Like? And we're back, episode 42, and Sam is not here. Yeah, I want to start off by saying there is no visual component to this week's episode. If you're listening, um, we don't have the skill set that Sam Phelps does to cut this bad boy together. Also... Oh, no! This is going not well. Okay, so usually when we get drinks, one of us pays. Sam Phelps runs for the drinks, and he isn't here today, and I didn't want to run, and it was probably my turn. So we're doing a whole no-drink November you week. You still didn't even get the drinks. I went upstairs and got the Diet Pepsi. You know your role. Bruh. Uh, <laughs> and we do have um, producer Logan in here today. Sam. I am not. This is your sound effect. Um, Yeah, you are not, Sam. You're here. Uh, You're going to fill in the role for the third person. Make sure this uh, antique stays on the road, Joe. This is fun, though, because I feel like this is like a good time to like formally reintroduce you because I think you're never really on the camera. Sometimes you have a couple quick cameos, but... Um, Usually just to like show off my slut track shirt or something. Yeah, Yeah. people don't know the man behind the talent of piecing it all together. One half is Sam Phelps, the other half is Logan Middleton. Hi, how are you? Okay. (laughs) How you doing, Logan? How is it? (laughs) Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Drink it. You guys are drinking Pepsi. I'm actually drinking Coca Cola. We are wow. through and through yeah. very Rivals firm here. Pepsi supporters. Former Pepsi co employee over here. Yeah, me. I used to work there. Mm. Now, uh, you wanted to talk something sexy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, real or I, I got a lot. I got lots to get through today. So to nobody this. should allow you to have that. You should have a limit on how many sound bites you use. I also wait, wait, wait. Let's play the one that you were laughing at nonstop. No, today. no, it's not appropriate for. What it's we're very funny. About. <laughs> 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 like, you, Mar- I it. would laugh at that every time I play it. She loves it. it. Oh, it's so funny. Um, okay, so enough about that. Uh, what the fuck, Ty? Really? Okay, okay, yeah, continue. Tell me about your sex Jesus. show. It's not my sex show. You didn't make a <laughs> pornographic film? No, no, no. Uh, I do want to keep my job. Um, no, I thought that... <laughs> so funny. I thought that we could talk about this because uh, Taboo Show came and went here in Calgary over the weekend, this past weekend. I went. Your girlfriend went. Mm-hmm. You should have went with her. Uh... Yeah, I guess I should have. Too scared. Too she went scared. out with her friends. Their we went friends on hot, a hot hot date night, Mr. Bunce and I, and we realized, damn, we are not the freakiest couple out there. <laughs> so we went and like, you know, you see your wall of dildies, you see your your, you know, is this a dog leash or is this for a person sort of tables and booths. There's a lot of it was like incredibly educational and very like, um, I hate to use the term like safe space because it sounds like very woke, but it was like very cool to see they had like all sorts of advocacy groups there for like safety and education and inclusivity. It was very cool. But um, on top of that, though, my favorite thing about the taboo show was overhearing other people's conversations. <laughs> And people watching, and I'm not judging. I'm not judging. It's just like when you go to the mall, you're not going to judge. You just judge in your head. But (laughs) I was more so like, holy shit, there has never been more of a time where I thought I was like open-minded, cool, interesting, uh, you know, trying person. Then you see some of the people that were there, and I was like, damn, I am a top of the fucking iceberg. Like, I use this analogy on our show. Like, let's say you had an interest in, like, cars, okay? You thought you were, like, a really good driver, and then you go to Formula One, and you're like, shut the fuck up. I am not a Formula One driver. 
I am dirt. A I am. Fan. I am nothing. That's right. That was. I was like at the Formula One of sex shows. Okay, like people there. I was like the Formula One of sex shows. <laughs> I was so bold. I was like the cosplay, the furries, the BDSM wear, the age gap in different couples. It was blowing my fucking. What was mind. the weirdest thing you overheard? Um. And like, again, no shame. I feel like you have a question on the tip of your tongue. You're ready. You're no, like, no, ahead, I need ahead. this. Yeah. Okay. So we were standing, I was uh, standing, I was looking at like some fucking lingerie or something. And then there was this couple that was there and Mr. Bunce was just waiting while I was standing, trying this shit on. And um, he hears this couple and this woman goes to this man. They're at this like part of the section where it's like ropes and like, cables and fucking shit like that. Chains. Yeah, pretty much. And she goes, you know, babe, I think that. The nipple clamps would only be good if you're hanging from the right angle. You know, you would need like a two point point of hang. And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? Physics, man. It's physics. Yeah. And I and then basically it was like this chick was talking about being hogtied suspended with like nipple clamps and i was like wow theater of the mind some people got some time and some flexibility on their hands that i just you know don't go <laughs> uh yeah like, right like, i'm like are we in trouble talk for talking about this i don't think so no uh, and i mean like whatever floats your boat you know if logan you-, you ever been to a taboo show no, we've got the Hitachi, so we, we, we've got mm. our hands full. But uh, I was curious. My, my girlfriend showed me this uh, uh, post on Twitter the other day, and yeah. it was like this like water bottle rack, but it was just dildos. Oh. But like some, like some most of them were just, they, they looked like uh, penises. Um, <laughs> Thank <but> you. There, <laughs> there, were, there were a few that like, one was like asparagus. One was like corn on what? the cob. Like just all oh, these like a bizarre, collection. Yeah, yeah. So like, what was like maybe one of the stranger things you saw? There was oh, that yeah. alien one you took a picture. Yeah, of. Yeah, I did. I actually took a picture. Maybe I ran should... <laughs> into work today being like, "Look at this." Maybe I should put that in the Hall of Fame. Um, no, kind of as a joke. Alien. <laughs> yeah, Bean. literally as a joke. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Mr. Bunce for a long time because he his like company name it has to like do with aliens and stuff. He just loves aliens. He has a fascination. So in my phone for years, his name has been Alien Poppy. That's what I call him. <laughs> Um, in the bedroom or just in just, general? Just in general on my contact <laughs> card and everything like that. Um, when we legally go to sign our names for our marriage license, it'll be great. Uh, but no, and so he was like, oh my God, hold that alien cock up. That's so funny. And I was like, okay. So I got a picture of me. I didn't take it out of the box or anything. This was one of the more tame ones for sure. Um but it was called the extraterrestrial penis. And they had a whole line of alien cocks. It was pretty funny. I'm trying to find the photo. Um, yeah, like, I can't find which one. There's yeah, so many. They're called creature cocks. This is this me one, with the Mr. Potato this head one. one. Was, uh, this one was just space cock. Oh. A message yeah. from the government of Canada. That's not nearly alien enough. I know. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Did you just include that? Um, but basically they had ones that were like a whole line of them. It was pretty cool. I was like, this is art. Like you could have this out on your table. They basically Someone's did a- Someone's job is to design those. Totally. Well, looking at that, like I could design a way better alien well, cock the, than that. But that's what I mean. This person that I saw at this table, they had basically a whole line of like alien tentacles okay. that were like dildos but it was like it just looked like art it was wild it was like all these different shapes and different like types of material and like different colors and they were hand painted and hand molded and it was fucking wild i was like i don't know if this is giving dick or if this is just giving like art i want to put this on my mantle yeah. yeah, I mean, the suction cup on the end of it would give it away, but it was kind of like, <laughs> it was pretty intricate. And then the whole time I was talking to this person who had this design, and she was like, yeah, you know, like, I just got really bored of seeing the basic stuff out there, and I love fantasies, I love gaming, I wanted to create something weird and fun and collectible, and I was like, you fucking go, girl. It's not just a dildo, it's a collectible, so mm-hmm. people will be saying. Yeah, I think they call them monster cocks. <laughs> I love that. 
It's X After Hours with Mariah and Ty. It's like X Afternoons, but in podcast form. And the uh, crispy minis are away and we're back. They're uh, not no. away. Mariah's yeah, got I mean, a couple uh, bites left. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a bite. Oh All right. So we do have uh, producer Logan here. Tell us about what you do here, I guess, because we know what you do, but a lot of people don't know what it means like to be a producer. You're not in the studio while we're on air being like, Ty, give me those levels one more time. You sounded great on the air right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, like I feel like people, when they think producer, they're like, ooh, it's like Diddy up in here cutting the tracks. Like, <laughs> yeah, know? we come in and he's like, I got this hot new <laughs> intro you, for you. A lot of people <laughs> think that like you guys have someone behind the board. Mm. Like producing like X after X afternoons as you go. Some radio yeah. shows have that, sure. but we we are not. We don't have yeah, that budget. Of yeah. money. Uh, but it's probably the most exhausting thing that I've had to do since starting at X is explaining to people exactly what it is I do. And like the easiest thing to say is that everything that is not someone talking mm-hmm. a song or a commercial is what I do, at least for X. And then they go, "Well, what else is there?" I'm like, well, there's a lot. But even sometimes you're doing commercials, but I think, like, think about, um, there's so many, like, things that play. The top of every hour, there's a, what we call a legal ID. Yeah, oh, one of the most exciting things I get to make for X. Oh, but think about, like, um, pr- promos for contesting that we yeah, have promos, coming up. Uh, even something as quick as just, like, uh, our imaging voice saying X. Like, I have to produce that, right? In between a song. Yeah. Um, or think. That's, that's another funny thing about it is when you think of the word imaging. Sorry, I got an email. That was not me this time. That was not Mariah this time. Read it on the podcast. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's from Matt. He says, hey, Ty, how's it going? How's that podcast going? (laughs) Hope it sounds good. Um, So back to your imaging you were saying? um, When when you say you're a radio imaging producer, like, oh, you take photos of radios? Oh, (laughs) Jesus. And you say, you bet I do. Yeah. I do it it's every cool. day, five yeah. days a week. Tough job here at the radio factory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also do our Mariah Ty versus Dracula. Whenever we have a very stupid idea, we need to make something, and like me and Mariah don't have the serviceable skills to get it done. Yeah, well, that's like the highlight of it, right? Because there's so many like just day to day things that I need to get done, like whether it be editing a podcast or like promos and stuff. So like when you or Mariah come and say like, hey, let's make a monster truck promo about a penguin walk. It's like, okay. like this is Creative. Like, this is fucking awesome. Um, I think that's really cool. I think it's just like, you could apply the whole like producer role, like being a very behind the scenes thing to like anything in media, right? Like think about like television shows, like live newscasts or like anybody who's doing a podcast or somebody who is, I don't know. Like, think about like cooking shows, okay? Think about how much work a producer has to put in. There's multiple different producers, but people like planning segments or like doing the after editing process. They got like, a taste test. They have to taste it. It's like crazy. And That's I think the taster, actually. We have one of those at X as well. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> His name's Darren Ollinger. Yeah. He tastes things for us. But it's you great. don't do any writing. We have a different human for that. And you don't necessarily produce some. Um, like yeah commercials you're doing like all the fun jazzy yeah. things it's uh, like because i used to be on air as well um, and you still are with exposure that's right i host exposure on sunday nights at 9 p.m um but it's great like i get to come in and just like support our on-air folks um in like a totally different way like i do sound effects for justin i do beckler and shauna's podcast and whatever dumb ideas they may have yeah. as well, which is like super fun for me. Cause like, I didn't really like when I was on air having to put my face out there and be kind of a public like a, figure. Yeah. So now it's like, I still get to be a part of all the fun stuff that we do in radio, but without having to like, you know, go on remote or do, uh, events and stuff. Walk through a haunted house. More importantly though, I think like, you know, if all hell breaks loose, we all shit the bed, at least Logan can come in and pick up a quick on air shift for us. That's right. You know what we say to you, Logan? Thank you for your patronage. Except I think that means you're a customer. You've been waiting <laughs> for like 20 minutes. To I've been sitting on them like, all day. I thought we were, thought so we were gonna do dueling clip. soundboards today. No, I'm pissed now. Oh okay? my! I had so many ready to go. <laughs> We should just do one episode, one podcast episode where you're by yourself. <laughs> just going and you boards. just, that's that it. That was pretty close to the Todd Rodman one. 
That one was great. Just as as the person who has edited every single one of these, just about except for a few that I missed, the Todd Rodman episode might be my favorite. Toddy, he's well, pretty good. I do have to come in with my own type of uh, topic for this, and I'll put the soundboard away for this. But uh, oh, what do you guys think about? You put it away. What do you guys think about Christmas music? Because uh, we were getting ready for. Christmas, me and the girlfriend putting up the tree, and she's like, "Let's get some songs going," and mm. like instantly, Cher comes on, and I was like, "Whoa!" Did not think this was a thing. Cher. But as I started listening to some of the songs, I was getting very confused because the ideas behind it is very strange. Like, if you're Alvin and the Chipmunks, like, what's the guy who 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 owns the Chipmunks in the in that scenario uh, in that song? Yeah, if you're Dave. Yeah. The first thing you're looking at doing is exploiting these talking chipmunks and making them sing a Christmas album. I mean, that's what isn't that what David Cross did in like the second movie? I guess so. I haven't yeah. seen the Chipmunks movies, I'll oh. be honest, but uh, I love how <laughs> I have to get on out it. of out of all the artists and range of Christmas music, you're like, let's talk about the chipmunks. Well, listen, we talked about what was it, baby? It's cold outside a couple of years ago. Now it's time to talk about those chipmunks. Like, what do they actually want to sing about? Um. Not to deviate from the chipmunks, but remember how we were talking about Sexy Dean from the Iron Giant, played by Harry Connick Jr.? Yeah. You're like, Alvin, um, sexy. Yeah, <laughs> no. Harry Connick Jr. came up. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. We got multiple. <laughs> Sorry, I'm firing him. I'm um, hot now. No, Warmed he up. came up in my like Christmas music that I was listening to in the Dean? album. Oh, Harry Connick Her- Jr. <laughs> Fucking Dean. Yeah, of course. He put together an album really quick from the Iron Giant soundtrack. Um, no, Harry Connick Jr., he's like, he's from like Christmas of 1998, and he's got a very nice cream turtleneck on. All of a sudden, I had a memory jog. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I've seen this album before. My mom had that album for years. And I remember that CD kicking around in our Sunfire. And I was like, oh my God, Harry Connick Jr. And that's why when so you were sexy. watching The Iron Giant yeah. and you heard his voice, you were like, oh my God. I know where my this is teenage from. Teenage Awakening. That's right. He loved it. Uh, no, you guys have a Christmas song that you can't stand? I worked in uh, mm. grocery retail for a little yeah, bit, so like Paul McCartney's "Wonderful Christmas Time" or whatever it is, that song's I can't do it. Well, I was, I was going to ask, like, like that's a that was embedded into my brain. Like, Paul McCartney "Wonderful Christmas Time" or John Lennon "Happy Xmas War Is Over." You got to take one. Oh, oh shit. my gosh. Um, I would take the Paul McCartney track "The Wings." I would take. Yeah. I would take that. I don't know. It's a little melancholy. The jo- I get the messaging, and I think it's. I I don't know. I don't have a gripe with Christmas music, though. I you love fucking it. Love you it. Live like, for it. But I like to listen to like Burl Ives and like I don't know more Your like daily a, the mix in November and December must yeah. be so weird because it's like actually I'm dreaming of a It's just like I was driving today. I was like, oh my god, do I put on my Christmas crooners playlist or do I go? to SoundCloud and rip some fucking house. You know what? We had a, <laughs> we had a snow day like a couple days before Halloween and Kat, my girlfriend, started mm. playing uh, some Christmas music and I was like, it's not even Halloween yet. You gotta stop. Yeah. Oh my I don't gosh. care if it's snowing. Yeah. Like, put it away. Yeah. Wow, what's your, okay, the, on the opposite end, I know, Ty, you don't really like it at all, but what's your Christmas artist? What's your album that you're like, you know what? John yes. Denver and the Muppets. That right. album rips. Really? It's great. Front to back, nothing but hits. Oh, Come on, my. Kermit. That frog can sing. You know what's funny is uh, the band Sloan. Um, one of my this favorite... is so a you answer. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it is, but it's funny. Like Over the years, they put out a handful of Christmas singles, so it's now at a point where like Sloan have like six Christmas covers or Wild. originals. Like, they've done like 12 Days of Christmas. They, did, they covered the Slade song. They, they wrote a few original Christmas songs. Uh, and they're great. Wow. Yeah. I would have never have guessed that Sloan put out a Christmas song, even a single. That is yeah, crazy. more than one, which is wild. Um, what about you, Mariah? What's your favorite? Oh, God. Like that share so Christmas one. Many. Uh, no, I think a lot of people shit on Mariah Carey, but she actually put out, um, and I watched this. This was around, like, her MTV Unplugged era, like her MTV Live Unplugged. That's like a famous taping that she did because she was so amazing. But she did um, her Christmas album live from this basilica in New York. And it's like her with a choir and it's very like decommercialized and it's more like gospel-y, but she is unreal. And it's like before she was like massive, massive superstar. And it's 
very beautiful. It's like urethral. I find it amazing. That's definitely my favorite. But yeah. Did you say urethral? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> urethral. Yeah. Think... You know what? Urethra Franklin. Her, her fucking Christmas song. Unbelievable. Urethral. Yeah, that urethra Franklin. <sighs> oh my goodness. You're diving a little deeper into the world of Mariah and Ty with the X After Hours podcast. And now it's time for Mariah and Ty's Hall of Fame. Okay, let's go. Mariah and Ty's Hall of Fame. Uh, I have the results, Mariah. Are you ready? It was all Iron Giant related. It was your favorite Iron Giant moment slash part. Oh, sure. And the name Hogarth and Hogarth's mom tied. Wow. Look at that. Was one of those years? Was yours Hogarth's mom? No, mine was when um, the giant did a cannonball in the lake. Sorry, that one did not That's get all right. in. Uh, well. Now it's time for Mariah and Ty's review of the week. It's time for Mariah and Ty's Review of the Week. There it is. Um, Mariah, what do you got? You had brought something in today I, because we're audio only. Yeah, You're like, no. I think I'm going to wait because it's a gooder. Um, I actually got it from the Taboo Show, but it's too good not it's to share. It's an alien cock. That's right. I'm going to whip it out. Um, from Hitachi. No. They make TVs and so much more. You're going to have to see next week. No, but I thought since I did bring in a product earlier that we did actually on our actual radio program, um, I wanted to review my Coffee Crisp cookies, which you guys both ate. And I thought that they were good. 10 out of 10. I'm biased because I made them, but I didn't have high hopes for them because Coffee Crisp is like the forgotten about chocolate bar. And they worked in the cookie. What did you guys say? I'm going to give you guys a laugh. Yeah, it was very good. It was a nice cookie. It was very nice. I like the Coffee Crisp wafer in it. Yeah, 10 out of 10 for me. Yeah? yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, guys. Thanks. Watch out. You better publish this recipe now. <laughs> People are going to want it. Uh, I also was going to bring in something, but then because uh, uh, it's audio only, I thought like, well, what am I doing? I'm going to review one of my favorite YouTube videos. That's like, you don't need a visual for this. It's a video called Bin Far. Have you seen it, Logan? What no, is this? All right, well, you guys just have to listen to this. It's super easy. It's a good little uh, advertisement. I think I got it ready to go here. All right, this is called Bin Far. Has you really been far, even as decided to use, even go want to look more like? Call 985-655-2500 inside the details for. Go further and even more decided to use. You can really be far as decided twice as much to use and go wish for it. When you decide far even wants to use and go want, then get really far even as decided to use and look more like and go after. It's just common sense. Apply today. I think that's what a stroke is. <laughs> what is that? That was Bin Far. You've never, oh my God. You've never heard that. I really liked that. <sighs> Has you really been far even as decided to use even go want to look more like? Call 985-655-2500 inside the details for. Go further and even more decided to use. You can really be far as decided twice as much to use and go wish for it. When you decide far even wants to use and go want, then get really far even as decided to use and look more like and go after. It's just common sense. Apply today. It's just common sense. Yeah, Bin Fire is one of my favorite YouTube videos. So wow. I'm nominating yeah. that for the whole Just common fame. sense. What's the story there? I don't know. <laughs> How did you find it? It's just that simple. It's I just, just, that simple. <laughs> just come on. If you try fire even once, <laughs> want to look more like, <laughs> you'll be good. Oh, so. Ah, and what do you guys think of your drinks? The old uh, <laughs> diet Pepsi. The taste of a new generation, Mariah. I love it. The choice of a new generation. Um, Give me that Wayne's World clip. Uh, Diet Pepsi. The taste. Or is it taste the difference? No. That's not what they say. The Wayne's choice. World. Is it the choice? Of a new generation. Oh, so it's Michael J. Fox. It is the choice of a new generation. Wow. Wow. It's just, I know it from Wayne's World. Wonderful. To tie it all back to the sex show, I, I lost my virginity while watching Wayne's World. Wow. Well, there you have that it, everybody. Is the mic drop right on the pod. There. 
It's on the podcast. There's the scoop. Uh... A message from the government of Canada. <laughs> All right, well, if you have any questions or anything, um, xafternoons at x929.ca. Am I forgetting anything, Mariah? Mm -hmm. Rate and review. Rate and review. uh, Send it to a friend, and video will be back when Sam's back from vacation. Thank you to producer Logan for coming on the show. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to X After Hours Podcast with Mariah and Ty. You want more? Then tune into X Afternoons with these two live on Calgary's Alternative X92.9, Monday through Friday, 2 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time at X92.9.ca. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and have the new episode of X After Hours downloaded weekly to whatever device you use. This Friday. Get ready. The Penguin Walk returns to the Wilder Institute at the Calgary Zoo. Bring the whole family. Kids three and under get in free. Free. You'll see all your favorite penguins, including Diana, Grace, Arthur, Solomon, Cleopatra, Napoleon, George, Rupert, and possibly the newest King Chip. <laughs> The Penguin Walk at the Calgary Zoo. Start time, 10.30 a.m. Tickets starting at just $29.95. We'll sell you the whole seat. But you'll only need the edge. We're not really sure, actually. They may or may not be seating for this event. Friday, 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 Penguin Walk! <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to use that. Is that better? I loved that. Okay. <laughs> really hammed it up.